If you've seen the architecture in Dubai, then it's not hard to believe that this is one of the most innovative cities in the world. Dubai, home to over 3 million people, is a luxury shopper's paradise. As a result, you'll find some pretty outrageous things on a visit there. Uh, ATM. From a vending machine that sells gold to ski resorts indoors, here are 15 outrageous things you'll only see in Dubai. If there's one site that'll bring tears to the eyes of any automotive enthusiast, it's the sight of luxury cars being abandoned and left to rot away until they're barely drivable. There are so many abandoned sports cars in Dubai that the majority of them get crushed by machines. Just like this Lamborghini you're seeing right now. Poor thing. But why don't they donate some of these cars to people instead of just crushing them? Hell, give one of these to me. I'll make perfect use of it. Trust me. But while you might think that it's rich listers who don't understand the value of money abandoning their cars at airports and car parks, that's often not the case. It is well and truly just molded into the ground that it sits on. The two or three thousand cars that are abandoned every year often have owners who couldn't manage the repayments. Low oil prices and the global financial crisis definitely played a part. So why can't the owners just declare bankruptcy? Well, there's no such thing in Dubai. Under Sharia law, not paying your debt is a criminal act. If you can't make a repayment, no matter how big or small, you face prison time. So many foreign workers, and even locals, skip the country to avoid the harsh penalties. Before we go when on, you think of vending machines, you generally think of delicious snacks and candy, or maybe even a refreshing beverage for when you're on the go, but not in Dubai. If you stay at the Abu Dhabi Hotel, then the vending machines there allow you to buy gold. And no, we're not talking about delicious chocolate coins that you get in your Christmas stocking. This five-star Emirates Palace Hotel has a vending machine that dispenses gold bars and gold coins. It was the first permanent gold vending machine in the world. Both the bars and coins come in little gift boxes, and you can choose to buy 1 gram, 5 gram, and 10 gram 24 karat gold bars. The coins come from Australia, South Africa, and Canada. But your loose change certainly won't be enough to get you anything from this vending machine. This gold to go machine updates pricing daily via the Ex Oriente Luxe's online shop. The prices are in line with the current per ounce price. However, they tend to be quite competitive because there are no staffing costs. Given that gold sits at around $1,600 per ounce, you'll be pushing coins into the machine for quite some time before a bar pops There are out. a lot of wealthy people in Dubai, and a lot of wealthy people who want to show others that they're wealthy too. While they could just give their dog or cat a diamond-encrusted collar, that's just not good enough. Many famous and wealthy people in Dubai wanted to make sure that everyone knew just how rich they really were. So they purchased exotic animals like tigers and cheetahs and would then take photos of them in front of their luxury cars. Oh. <laughs> Even walking down the street, it wasn't uncommon to come across people walking their pet tiger like it was no big deal. Fortunately, though, those days are over, at least for those law-abiding Dubai citizens anyway. Due to pressure by animal welfare groups, there is now a rule that prohibits the purchase and sale of wild and dangerous animals for private ownership. If you're not a zoo or sanctuary, you've just gotta have a boring cat or dog like the rest of us. What happens if you're caught with an exotic animal? Well, not only will you have your animal confiscated, but you can also end up in jail for six There's months. There's a lot to love about Dubai. From the luxury shopping opportunities to the flashy cars and amazing food. But there's something that many people can take or leave, and that's the heat. Dubai is sweltering, and even winter feels mildly tropical. But if you find yourself holidaying in Dubai anytime soon, then you may end up more comfortable than you first thought. In 2012, it was announced that Dubai Holding would build the largest shopping center in the world, which would be a kind of air-conditioned city. 
It would cover 48 million square feet and would be built in Mohammed bin Rashid's city. However, it was later decided to put it in Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Road instead. It would have 8 million square feet of shopping space, the largest indoor game park in the world, 20,000 hotel rooms, cultural events, theaters, and more. It would also see around 180 million visitors every year. Do you think you would be one of them? After all, note the word air condition. Where better to escape the sweltering heat than in a massive mall where you can shop until you drop? Even at the coldest of part of the year, you won't find the mercury dropping below 60 degrees Fahrenheit in Dubai. In fact, from May until September, 100 plus degrees is relatively common. But what are you supposed to do if you don't own a luxury car with air conditioning and must take the bus instead? Well, you'll be able to do it in comfort. Rather than working up a sweat just standing at the bus stop, you can feel as fresh as a daisy. Back in 2006, the Road Transit Authority of Dubai started rolling out air-conditioned bus stops. They were installed the following year. Now, there are hundreds of such stops throughout Dubai. I feel uh, not very tired when I go to work. Now, there's no excuse for you arriving to work hot and sweaty. But Dubai didn't stop at just air conditioning. After Abu Dhabi installed air conditioning in their bus stops, Dubai took it one step further. They started offering free Wi-Fi at bus stops for prepaid transit cardholders. So now, you're not only fresh and comfortable, but you can stream your favorite TV shows while you wait for the bus. After seeing the amazing infrastructure in Dubai, you've probably realized by now that Dubai is a trend-setting city that likes to be the best at everything. They are continually coming up with ways to make their city stand out from others. They certainly did that with their underwater world. This world incorporates the world's largest indoor aquarium and an underwater zoo. The aquarium tank can hold 10 million liters of water, and it has more than 200 species of aquatic animals and 33,000 in total. The acrylic panels of the aquarium were featured in the Guinness Book of World Records for being the largest of their kind, and the aquarium has won several awards too. Any visit to this underwater world is memorable, even if you've been there a dozen times. You can see crocodiles, penguins, jellyfish, spider crabs, and much, much more. There's even an exhibit with creepy crawlies and reptiles. Pretty much everything cool in the animal kingdom you can think of is something you can see in Dubai. And the kicker? This large indoor aquarium is in a mall. What do you do when you run out of beach space and places to build? Well, you create more, of course. So that's exactly what visionaries in Dubai did. They created and are creating the world's largest human-made island. And no, they didn't just dump a heap of sand in the water and call it an island. They carefully crafted islands in the shape of a palm tree and called them Palm Dera, Palm Jumeirah, and Palm Jebel Ali. The goal was to create the largest human-made island, then use it to house more than 1 million people in a surface area of about 46 million square meters. Palm Dera, the first island, will be larger than Paris. Creation began in 2001, and Palm Jumeirah was financed by the money Dubai earned from petroleum. It is so large that it can be seen from the International Space Station. This island is for private homes and hotels. It was also built from sand and rocks, with no concrete or steel necessary. Around 5.5 million cubic meters of rock came from 16 quarries in Dubai, and 94 million cubic meters of sand came from deep sea beds off Dubai's coast. The island also used around 700 tons of limestone. The tallest building in the world is something that every country aspires to have. 
One country will have big dreams and build the tallest building, but then another country will swoop in and steal the title. As of now, that title belongs to Dubai, with the Burj Khalifa structure developed by Imar Properties. The Emirate is now synonymous with some of the world's most impressive construction projects. Described as a vertical city, Burj Khalifa is 2,716 feet 6 inches tall, and construction began in 2004. By October 1, 2009, it was fully finished and became the tallest building in the world. It consists of 26,000 hand-cut glass panels in the exterior cladding and even has a Y-shaped cross-section to stop the wind from being a problem that high up in the sky. Such is the size of this building that if you were to clean it from top to bottom, it would take around three months. More than 12,000 people worked on bringing this building to life, and you can tell that it's a work of art. It will surely be a long time before any other country or city builds something as astounding and as tall as Burj Khalifa. Dubai is always trying to outdo other countries when it comes to the tallest buildings and the wealthiest people. But they're also winning the titles for things that different countries and cities aren't even vying for. For example, did you know Dubai has the tallest tennis court in the world? Because, well, why not? At around 650 feet above ground, there's a tennis court on top of the Burj Al Arab Hotel in Dubai. That might explain being hit by a tennis ball that randomly fell from the sky if you happen to be walking down the street. But no, the building's designers didn't just decide to put a tennis court on top of the roof of the hotel during its construction. Instead, it used to be a 4,500 square foot grass helipad that was turned into a tennis court to promote the 2005 Dubai Open. Both Roger Federer and Andre Agassi were given the opportunity to play on the court and were even able to hit tennis balls off of it. According to Andre, it was an amazing experience to play 650 feet in the air. He said once you get over how high up you are, it is a joy to play up there. He said he had no issues with the height, as long as he didn't have to bungee jump off it. Every country is known for something, and it just so happens that Dubai is known for its supercars. In fact, you may even go so far as to say it's a supercar paradise. You can't drive two feet without seeing Aston Martins, Ferraris, Porsches, and Bugattis. Even the police are using supercars to get around. But why is Dubai a supercar paradise and not somewhere like England or even Texas in the United States? Well, Dubai is a city of high salaries and low to no income taxes. The roads are also perfect for supercars in that they are well lit and perfectly maintained. Dubai and Pothole are not two words you would ever see in the same sentence, except for that one. Supercars are also considered a status symbol. If you're wealthy, then you buy a supercar and let everyone know about it. Even if you just want to look wealthy, then you can buy a flashy Lambo or a Porsche and just pay it off. Or you try and join the police force and drive one for a living. Dubai police have BMWs, Bugattis, Dodge Vipers, Ferraris, Audi R8s, Aston Martins, Bentleys, and more. While there are many fun things to do in Dubai, there's one thing that's trickier to do here than in other places and that's ski. With average temperatures over 100 degrees for much of the year, it's not exactly the prime conditions for snow, is it? But let's be honest, as innovative as Dubai is, you just know they're not gonna let a little thing like the sun stop them from enjoying the ski fields. If you can't have the snow outside, then you just bring it inside. And that is exactly what they did. Mall of the Emirates is one of the largest shopping malls in the world. And while you can shop until you drop here, you can also go skiing. Within the Colossal Mall is an indoor ski resort called Ski Dubai. It is 22,500 square meters and maintains a temperature of between 28 to 30 degrees. It has an indoor 278-foot mountain, which is about as high as a 25-story building, and five slopes with various difficulty levels. It also has a 1,312-foot run, the world's first indoor black diamond run, and a whole heap of fun things to do like kickers, boxes, and rails. And let's not forget ski lifts, for it has those too. Who would have thought staying indoors could be so much fun? 
If you Number think you could four. ever run from the law in Dubai, then think again. Not only do they have harsh penalties, but they also have fast cars. And not just your average fast car, but like a super, super fast car. Among the fleet of already flashy police cars, you will find a Bugatti Veyron. It has been verified as the world's fastest police car by the Guinness Book of World Records. According to Major Sultan al Mari from the Dubai Police General Department of Transport and Rescue, having a Bugatti Veyron is not about showing off. Instead, they want tourists to see how friendly police are in Dubai. The car is present in popular tourist destinations, so you can only imagine just how many people want to get a photo with it. The mid-engine Bugatti Veyron was developed by the Volkswagen Group in Germany, but was manufactured in Molsheim, France. It gets its name from racing driver Pierre Veyron. The original version could reach top speeds of 253 miles per hour. So don't even think about trying to outrun the police if you're about to be pulled over. There's only no. so much money you can line your walls with or stuff into the lining of your mattress. What do you do when you just got too much money? Yeah, I have this problem too. Well, there's one thing you can do with it, and that's make cars out of gold. The Garson division of Cactus Corporation exhibited the luxury crystal bends. Because why not? If a $4.8 million car in Dubai is just too cheap, then turn it into a $7.5 million car. Robert Gulpin Engineering in Germany carved a 1 to 8 scale model of a car out of a solid 500 kilogram block of gold. It was then sold at auction and a huge amount of the money that it sold for went to charity, so that's nice. But if you want a car that runs and drives, then you can have a gold-plated vehicle instead. Turkey bin Abdullah, the seventh son of the late King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz, had not one, but several cars plated in gold. Some of them include a Brabus G700, a Ferrari, and a Bentley. A $1 million gold-plated Nissan R3 GTR named Godzilla was also put on display at the Auto Mechanica Automotive Parts Exhibition in Dubai. The car has a brilliant gold paint sheen, which was then engraved with beautiful detailing. Using the toilet and talking about using the toilet are not the most glamorous things. Unless, of course, you live in Dubai and your toilet paper and toilet are made of gold. Some hotels in Dubai have toilets made of solid gold, and some private house owners do as well. So it was only a matter of time until someone came up with the idea of gold toilet paper too. Australian company Toilet Paper Man decided it would be them. It took them four years to develop it, but they finally managed to come up with a single roll of toilet paper with 22 karat gold flakes from the beginning of the roll to the end of it. As you wipe, gold flakes not only fall on the floor, but on your behind as well. Given the luxurious nature of the roll, there was only one in existence, and it came with a price tag of $1.3 million. Do you know how many regular rolls that could buy you? 15 million. But when you buy this particular roll, you also get to have it gift wrapped and with a complimentary bottle of champagne. You don't get that with your bulk packages of toilet paper at Walmart. As futuristic as Dubai is, we think that actual flying supercars are still a little way off. Still, they are flying in some way. If you own a supercar, then it's probably your pride and joy. You may not even like the idea of being parted from it as you go off on a relaxing holiday. Well, now you don't have to be. Emirates has a service called Emirate Wheels, which is an air transportation solution for automobiles, to put it in fancy terms. You can choose from three services. Emirates Wheels, Emirates Wheels Classic, and Emirates Wheels Select. If you're away for business or on holiday, you can have your car flown over to your door rather than having to put up with substandard rental car services. So far, the service is proving surprisingly popular. It peaks in summer, but Emirates is moving at least 150 cars a month. The trend seems to be catching on, and now other airlines are offering it too. Dropping this under here is literally like bringing back a slice of Italian pride. Before long, no one will have to be without their prized set of wheels on extended trips if they don't have to be.